story, story, story. If people don't know history, of course, they will not know where they are coming from. Neither will they know where they are going to. And this brings us to this um, story about a uh, Oromiyo. And we are hearing that Oromiyo was never a Yoruba priest, but a Bini king. Let's get into the details. The Yoruba version of the story is so different from real version of the story of Oromiyo. According to the Yorubas, Oromiyo was the son of Okonbi and grandson of Odudua. In fact, some say he was a man of two fathers. They claim Odudua and Okonbi had relations with Lakonji and gave birth to Oromiyo. That means he had two fathers. Personally, I don't see the biological explanation to this and neither do I see the clarity in this myth. The Yoruba version of his story goes on to tell of a time when Oromiyo had to leave the Yoruba land and rule Benin out of force. Oromiyo and his army invaded Igodomigodo, what Benin was called at the time, subdued it and brought the great Benin Empire under its control with all its realism. This isn't feasible. As opposed to the Yoruba version of Oromiyo's story, there's much clarity from Edo people's tale is life. We all know Odudua was a Benin prince who fled from Igodomidu. What we didn't know is that Odudua's father was actually Ogiso Owodo, the last Ogiso Sky King of Igodomigodo. After his father's death, the throne was empty and the Benins needed Odudua's to take needed Odudua to take his role as the king of Igodomi Godu. But due to his old age and new found calling in Ilefe, he refused their offer, yet he promised to give them his son, Omonoyo, meaning precious child in Edo language, but later corrupted as Oromiyo by the Yorubas. Since it was his blood, after carefully testing the Benins with Lies, Odudua was sure that his son would be taken care of in Igodomigodo as their new king. This is how Oromiyo left Ileife to become the first oba of Igodomigodo. Hmm. History, history, history. A lot of us do not even know history and a lot of this uh, history are disjointed. This story, we call them stories. You know, at some point, people were really getting along with all this uh, history from one generation to another but all of a sudden in nigeria they just cut it off now i think they have brought history back and a lot of people are writing and saying what they know some people will say can't it all that was not the issue that was not the case this is how it happened this is how it did not happen and a lot of people are just confused what do we believe which one do we take we don't even have a documented uh a, a place that is well documented or where we have a documentary of from stage to stage even what we are experiencing now people are supposed to be documenting it what even happened in the last 10 years people are still arguing it no it didn't happen that way this is how it happened few people are writing and i don't know whether it is well documented whether they are being kept in a place where people can just go back to them and begin to get them so even what we are experiencing today, what the life we are living today some people should be somewhere of course maybe some people are somewhere they are writing it because I think in the past, in this, our own world, we don't even recognize all of that. Everybody would just like, I beg, who is to help? I beg, now nah, nah today, nah today I know, I don't know about those ones. How that one can't say help me? But it goes beyond that. And that's why we see a lot of people just saying whatever they feel. So, say, say, talking stories of other people of which they don't even know. You know, most especially when it comes to Benin. They, I think it, it, Benin is one of the... Uh, places in Nigeria that you see that they really have a that culture. They have that culture and they be, they always follow it up. And that's why it's always it's always back and forth. They will talk about oh Lagos, Eko, Yoruba, Benin. But as as we speak today, that's how you see. Uh, some people say oh Benin people are too. They will, they always like oh yeah they are too traditional. Let me just use that that word. They are too traditional. You see, they are all these they are ancient. This all these they are they are whatever uh, things that they've molded. If you just go to what is it called? One of those uh, uh, places uh, in Benin, 
you will see all those hearts that are just there. You'll just be wondering. Some people are always scared. Ah, you know, this thing looks like, you know, it looks diabolical. But these people, they always follow it up. And that's why I say, you see that when one of the uh, uh, Edo monarch is one of the monarchs in this country that, you know, it is highly, very, very respected. You can't take it from them. Their tradition, they always, it's intact. Their tradition is intact. Even it goes with the modern day modern day thing they don't they don't they are not ashamed of those things but people just always oh they are too they are too traditional they are too this they are too that but it's a good thing we don't even know that's why we always copy 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 a lot of things that we don't even know we copy other people's culture we we, we, we all even learn other people's history that will not even be beneficial to us and somebody will be telling us our history so kudos to those who are still keeping this history, history from time to time of course, this might not even go down well with some people. Some people come and say, "Oh, this is it, and this is really, this the, this is coming from a, a, a Wikipedia." You know, if you go to Wikipedia, you can get more information about a, this a, old story here and there. Well, how come Oromiyo left back to his father's land to become king? His senior brothers are the uh, Kwelu Kwelus in the Kitties, Oshun and Oyo State, where. Are uh, Oromiya siblings in Edo State? The story is untrue. If you want the full story, go to Odudua history in Ilefe. That's what someone is saying here. But the Ife story that Odudua is a sky king or Ogiso that fell down from the sky and crashed, landed in Ife is so outlandish. When we, when we you and F9 as Yoruba pass mark, mind, uh, mind you. Uh, now Sky King is what we we Benis call Ogiso, and why Yorubas literally thought Odudua was because his superior royal uh, breeding and mythical provides uh, mythical and mythical prowess he obtained in a civilized Igudu, a do society which made him uh, defied uh, bitey bitey barbarian. If a tribe, I don't know what this one is saying here. Why the Bini version is more credible? What was presented as Yoruba's version is not fully correct. The Yoruba version acknowledges that there was a request from Bini to Ife to give them a ruler. The missing link was why Bini had to make that request. But to say Yoruba version claimed that Oromiyo went and conquered Igodomigodo is not right. The interesting thing about the old story is that Yorubas and Benis are historically linked. Mm. Go and read Oromiyo on Wikipedia before you say this. Please, of course, that's what we are telling you. Just go to Wikipedia, you get the full story there. If your reason the Yoruba version of the story is not correct, it's due to the report that Oromiyo forcefully took over Benin. Then, it's inaccurate to agree with the popular story of the Beni king that forcefully took over Lagos Island to become their king. Sounds logical, although I am not saying it is absolutely true, but it is more factual that, than the Yoruba version of the Oromiyo. The Beni kingdom that has been for over 2,000 years will not come to plead with Odudua to rule them if he had to link to the throne. The fact that Beni Empire is far, far older than the Oyo also backs your analysis. Nobody can be 100% sure, but the point raised by this writer is more intellectually appealing. Mm. Just like I said, if we don't document all this, is, even as we are living today, some people will tell you, oh, this, that was, uh, this is not what you, you yourself, you are that you are listening to me. Somebody will say, no, that, so that was not the life or that is not the kind of life you lived when somebody will not be telling your story. But what is happening now, if we can still be documenting it, because now we are even saying that things that happened, let's say 10, 20, 30 years ago, we, there are no proper documentation. And even up to now, it has not even taught us letting that we should even start documenting things. And some people believe that, oh, when you write some things, oh, maybe you try to, maybe if it is a bad thing, then you try, you continue to ponder on that thing. And it, if that thing is negative and it might be giving a lot of people a kind of a, a kind of a mindset towards other people, but it doesn't go, it doesn't matter. And I think that, that was one of the reasons why they had to cut history from our, our curriculum, which is not helping us. And a lot of people are not even 
familiar with the history and a lot of people are not just even they don't even know and people will come and be telling them all manner of stories it's always good that we should document whatever that we are doing and you will see that even all those uh, developed countries they will even be the ones telling us our history they even told us that uh, they discover uh, mungo park and why meanwhile people were living there we were living there maybe they gave that that's a different name but that they shouldn't tell us that uh, they discovered that for us but because we are not uh we are not always documenting things so other people will now come and be telling us our history which is not proper or mono your miss pampered child okay that was somebody saying there someone says in another context it can also mean precious child or tenway of course pamper precious you know when you pamper something you can only pamper something that is precious to you something something is not precious to you you just look good that way you know you don't care about it so guys uh, let us hear your opinion whether you have a different uh opinion concerning what this writer has said leave your comments in the comment section thank you